Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to another five minute chess game. I am playing John Locke from Lost. Wait, <laughs> never mind. Um, what do I play here? Oh, he played this line. All right. I really want to practice this line, but nobody's played it against me the normal way yet. Hopefully he does. It goes bishop to d3, c5, knight f3. Again, um, failed to play the normal line, so... I'm just confused. All right, uh, how does this go? I guess bishop takes and c5. I can't remember the theory exactly. Forgive me, forgive me. I'll go knight c6. If f3, queen h4 um, works for me. What do I do? Do I take and go like queen a5? Or is it not that good? I think it's not that good for some reason. I can't remember what to do, honestly. So, uh, wait, hold on. Let's, let's slow down a second. Why do I feel like bishop d7 makes sense? I don't know. I'm just going to do it. I can't remember the theory. It's a, this is a kind of obscure line. Soon I will have a better memory of it. But, oh, I can't do what I wanted to do. He goes f3 and wins my piece. Such a donkey. Oh, no, I have f5 when he goes f3. I'm remembering that now. I'll just do this. I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry. It's a weird line. Like, f3, f5, and I think I my piece survives. Because when he takes, I take with the f-pawn. Uh, so I'm just trying to, like, develop my pieces super fast. And if he takes my pawn by capturing on e4, I'm just hoping my development edge will will be good for me. I think it will. I'm cold. I feel like I had this game recently, honestly. And I crushed somebody, like, right away. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, Alright, so I was gonna go f5. Let's just do it real fast. I can also go knight d2 and knight takes c4. Which actually looks pretty technically strong. So I just do that, actually. <laughs> um, because, you know... After I take this, if he takes on c4, and I take, and he takes, the d5 square is really weak, and his king's in the middle of the board. Just looks good for me. I'm not, I wasn't so worried about this. I just feel like maybe, maybe rook c8. I'm just going to think for a second, though. Let's play this rook to c8, just so, in case I need space for my king to run away. Like, if he ever swings his queen around and checks me, I can run to g8, to f8, to e7, in the worst-case scenario. Um, I guess I'll take queen d5, looks pretty good. Oh, knight, uh, attacks the d-pawn, so that looks good. I guess he has rook d1, though. What to do? Well, his plan is probably going to be knight h3 to, to f4, so I'm going to go knight e7. To trying to open up my bishop, and then when he goes knight h3, I'll go knight g6, stopping knight f4, I think. I really like my game here, I just think white's happy, uh, or sorry, black's happy. I'll go knight e7 anyway, I guess. Um, hmm. Hmm. Why do I want to go g5? This seems like a stupid move, so I'm not going to do it. If I go knight f5, and then king f2, and then... How do I, like... I don't know how to break this, this stupid... I give up. Man, I don't know what to do. This is probably not the best, best move ever. Somehow, you know, his bishops are opposite, and I can't really break through. My, my, my light square bishop doesn't have so many great things to do here. It's a little annoying. Maybe I'll go queen b3 next. Just kind of chill out. Uh, I guess I want to go my knight to d5. I was surprised he let me. I figured he'd go knight f4. And, like, at least force a trade when we do that. If rook b1... I suppose queen a6. Don't know what else to do. My position looks fine. I actually thought it was going to be better than this, but... 
For the most part, it looks fine. Let's try to trade queens. Oh, just goes ahead and ignores me. <laughs> um, all right, I'm gonna do this uh, just to like uh, queen c2 if he lets me. Why the hell did I do that? Nobody knows. But okay, I'm losing a pawn. Let's make some quick moves. I lost a pawn, but I have reactive pieces, so it might be okay for me. Very active. I should maybe just take and. Well, let me think. He can't move his knight anywhere. If rook b8, he can he can take on. I see. I think he rook b8 and then like rook. No, I'm just gonna do it and then rook b3. I feel like I may have like an unbelievable initiative there. Even though he can take on f7 and be up two pawns. Because rook b3, if he moves his bishop away, then I can go rook b2 and, and pin his knight on e, e2. So I think it's like, my pieces are just really strong. And that's what I'm always noticing. Like, I, yeah, he's up a pawn, but my knight on d5 is dominant against his bishop on c3. My bishop on d3 is pretty good. Although I can always consider just capturing on e2 and playing good knight against bad bishop. Uh, my pawn on c4 could be really strong someday in the future. I think this is a very good decision to just give up my pawns for a piece activity. I'm going to pre-move this. Oh, he didn't do it. Let's see what he does here. It's very difficult. I mean, bishop a1 is playable, and then I go rook a3, and it's like threatening rook a2 type ideas. It's just a really unpleasant position. I'm threatening to take on e2 and take on c3. He's down to a minute now while he tries to work this out. I'll do this to start. I, I assume he has to move his knight now, maybe knight g3. But it's it looks very ugly for him. Very ugly indeed. Uh, I didn't even see that. I can take on a1. Um, but then he takes on a1, knight c3. He's, he gets some active pieces there, so I don't, I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm going to make some quick moves. Try to utilize, utilize my time edge just in case I can't win on the board. Knight c2 is a strong move next move, though. It's virtually winning. And he's low on time, so yeah, there we go. So I want a piece. And I have a pass c pawn. I'm probably going to go rook g8. Because h6 I can take, and my bishop defends the h7 square, which would be uh, some kind of checkmate otherwise. Oh, this guy is, man, he's, he's, he's pushing. All right. Let's play like this. I know it's tougher than it, it looks, unfortunately, this position. I think this move works, though. Rook f8, rook takes pawn on e7. I guess I'll just push this guy. Um, let's keep pushing guys. <laughs> Alright, is that a problem of any sort? I highly doubt it. I don't know why I didn't go rookie one and just try to make a queen, but I didn't for some reason. Give me a second, folks. I mean, he has no threat with g6, right? Oh, he does, actually. I should move my... no. This looks good. I'm going to have to give up my, my piece, unfortunately, but I, I think I'm winning anyway. <sighs> I didn't see that move. Um, you can probably just take on e7, though, right? Oh, I didn't see that. Um, I mean, I'm still in peace, so... Position's pretty good for me. Alright, good luck stopping these pawns. Sometimes the time advantage is very nice in chess because you can just relax and find the best moves where your opponent has to, has to rush the whole time. You could safely resign here, but he's not. Checkmate! Oh man, he's provisional. It's, it's a shame. He's actually a pretty solid player, but now I don't gain the full rating points. Um, anyway, I think I played a pretty good game there.
he won his first two games in his his rating history. Yeah, you know, I just had this good night, and I think I think this was a good move. You know, I'm down two pawns, but I'm putting a huge amount of pressure on him. He had to give one back. This was a nice move, but now knight c2 is really annoying. And he got some counterplay, but it wasn't really enough, in my opinion. I probably, at least. And, and he was very low on time, so from a practical standpoint, he had, he had big troubles. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you tomorrow with another 5-minute game. Bye-bye.